Hi, Phil Pulley here with my TCH 563 Independent Inquiry Project uh, in the summer of 2013. I chose to do mine on the book I read called Flip Your Classroom, Re uh, Reach Every Student in Every Class Every Day by Jonathan Bergman and Aaron Sams. They wrote that uh, and released it last year in the summer of 2012. I um, can't remember when I first became aware of the flipped classroom. It's been a few years back and reading some things and was intrigued by it um, as, as a new way of doing things. And, and a flipped classroom is essentially where they've turned things sort of what they say upside down. What we're flipping is instead of having a lecture in classroom, what you might see on the left side of the screen, what you do instead is a lecture and your homework instead of being homework of problems or whatever it is, is actually watch the lecture. Uh, that leaves the teacher to be available in the classroom to help act as a guide for those types of regular homework. Now, Bergman, Obermeyer, and Willie in 2012 had an article out that says, the flipped classroom is a means to, an increase, to increase interaction and personalized contact time between students and teachers. Okay. And I had been looking for a way to find more discussion and application time for my universal response questions where I'm asking students to tell me what they thought was interesting from a history reading or what they thought was important. Um, I asked them to ask me questions about things they didn't understand or want to know more about. And one of the things I find out is things I thought they knew things about, they didn't know things about. And I'm also asking them to try and make connections, history, and even between history events and history and today. Okay. Now, Rowan and Bigham uh, have talked about the idea of technology uh, not transforming schools at all because it's been domesticated to what they call old practices. In other words, technology that moves into the education sphere is things that we can find an easy way to do what we're already doing in education, and it gets adopted. In fact, they say that things that don't easily fit that model tend to be the things we tend to ban in schools. Now, my high school had recently moved to a one-to-one -one classrooms. Uh, at the time, they had laptops. Next year, we'll have tablets. Uh, every student gets a device. They can take those home with them. And so I was looking for now an opportunity to implement a flipped classroom so that all my students would have access to the videos and online content all the time. Now, of course, Bergman and Sams point out that the flipped classroom has more to do with pedagogy than with technology itself. And what they're saying is, it, it, like... Uh, Bigham and Rome is this idea that it's not the technology, it's what you do with the technology to transform how you're teaching. In other words, now that you've got that lecture out of the way, what are you going to do with that classroom time that has been freed up? Okay. This reminded me a lot of the ideas of Sir Ken Robinson in his TED talk where he talked about we need to uh, transform what we're doing to uh, uh, education and look for new ways of teaching students. Uh, and also in his uh, RSA animate video where he talks about changing educational paradigms. Now a little bit of the background uh, on the flipped classroom uh, from Bergman and Sams and others. Uh, they developed the idea in the fall of 2006 when I think Aaron read an article uh, about uh, screen casting uh, technology and decided to use that to record some uh, lectures. They started recording their lectures in spring of 2007, all, in fact all their, their lectures. Um, this is actually based on an earlier idea from 1995 to 1996, uh, which was written about by Leg, Platt, and Treglia, uh, an inverted classroom article they did in 2000, uh, 2000 which uh, they took their basic economic classrooms and recorded their lectures. At the time, students had to go to the library and watch them on VSH tape. If they brought a VSH tape, they would make a copy for them. Okay. Now, the flipped classroom is this whole series of ideas, again, flipping the lecture so I have more classroom time and that direct instruction that's simple can be done outside of class and more time for activities and things. It's become a growing movement uh, in K-12 education and has been of interest to me. Okay. Now, Bergman and Sams list several reasons why you should flip your classroom. And one of the things they say is it helps busy students. In fact, the reason they said is one of their basic goals of recording their lectures was to help those students who were going on field trips or in extracurricular activities who were gone out of school and would miss classes and come back and say, well, what did I miss? And they would say, come here, watch the video. And soon they started applying that to all their lectures for all of their students. They say it is something that helps struggling students, so those students who uh, are behind who might miss a question or something or miss something in a lecture and might not ask a question, they can go back and rewatch it and, and ask questions later on that. 
Now, they see it as something that helps all students to excel, not just the struggling students, but those students who might be at the upper ends who sometimes kind of get held back, actually, from being able to excel even further. Okay. One of the things we talked about is this idea you can pause and rewind the teacher. And I know from my experiences, um, when I have aides in the classroom to do with, deal with uh, students with IEPs, they watch the videos themselves and love those things. Okay. I can inc have increased interactions. They talk about this idea between student and teacher as well as between students. So that's a nice option. Uh, again, this idea of differentiation of instruction. So not just the struggling students, but again, people on all ends and even those in the middle. They said it results in improved classroom management and improved communication with parents, which they said oftentimes is uh, what they found interesting was the fact that oftentimes they found out the parents were watching the videos as well and could help the students because of that. Now, this reminds me of something that uh, Darling and Hammond in their book uh, wrote about this idea that typically parent involvement is typically limited to giving and receiving of information about their children. Well, with the flipped classroom, now they kind of, the parents actually know what is actually going on and can be more informed about what is going on in the classroom, a much more transparent classroom for that matter. Okay, I've been using the videos uh, in my classroom to make uh, lecture videos and also some videos I use at the beginning of the year, like this one, where I teach students to think historically and make historical connections. This one, I connect the... Uh, Band Blink 182 to the Roman Empire. Uh, if you want to see that one, let me know. But the big idea of this flipped classroom is this, that the teacher is now free to help students when they're actually applying, whether it be math problems in a mathematics class or doing inquiry or making connections in a history classroom. The teacher, the expert in the room, is there to help as opposed to students doing that at home and having only their parents to consult or the text. So a flipped classroom, I think it's down to, at the very end here, this big question of John and Aaron's, which is, what is the best use of face-to-face -face time with students? And they think that is more to use it for higher order thinking on Bloom's taxonomy as opposed to low order disseminating information like one might do with a simple lecture. Okay. Or as Ignacio Estrada uh, pointed out, and what I actually used at the beginning of my paper was, if a child can't learn the way we teach, maybe we should teach the way they learn. And our digital natives a little bit different from us digital immigrants? Possibly, but given the technology and the fact that we can need to do more high order thinking, this might be a way to try and accomplish that. Thanks. References.